My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. Hello, my name is Alyssa Berg, and today's leadership quote is from an unknown author. Be strong enough to stand alone, smart enough to know when you need help, and brave enough to ask for it. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. Thank you so much for listening all around the world. Hey, friends. Welcome to episode 113. You can check out the show notes at leaderassistant.com slash 113. Leaderassistant.com slash 113. Today, I'm very excited because my interview is with Alyssa Berg, and Alyssa was our first premium leader assistant subscriber back um, about a year ago, actually, right about a year ago, April 2020. We launched the Leader Assistant Premium Membership. We do monthly coaching training sessions, and then we record those sessions and add them to our members-only library so that you can review them if you can't join us live. Uh, We also have bonus uh, templates and video resources, um, all types of topics like negotiation, resumes, performance reviews, Uh, email management, calendar management, burnout, uh, anything and everything, even cryptocurrency, uh, anything that you could think of that you would be interested in for leveling up and leading well in your personal life and professional life. Uh, We have over 140 members now, um, a year after launching. Uh, Like I said, Alyssa was number one. So this is a fun episode where we're going to kind of do a member spotlight um, on her and how she has really leveled up and learned to lead well uh, and just recently landed a new role. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with Alyssa. If you're interested in joining us in the premium membership subscription group, uh, you can check us out at leaderassistant.com slash membership. That's leaderassistant.com slash membership. Uh, Many of our members get their companies and executives to pay for the membership fee. It's $59 a month or $599 for the annual membership, which saves you a little bit of money per month. I think that averages to around 49 a month if you buy the annual subscription. So leaderassistant.com slash membership. And I hope you enjoy this member spotlight with Alyssa. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning into the Leader Assistant Podcast. It's your host, Jeremy Burroughs. And today I'm very excited to be speaking with Alyssa Berg. Alyssa is Executive Assistant to the President of Lux Hotels. How's it going? It's going good. We're almost to my 30-day mark at this uh, job. Wow, that's exciting. You're going to have to tell us all about your uh, onboarding process here in a second. But first, I wanted to just kind of get a little bit of a taste of how you became an assistant and why you like the role. Sure. Like many others, I kind of fell into the role uh, and didn't know that that's what I wanted to be until I was in the role itself. So I've been working in the administrative world for the last 14 years, working in kind of little different departments. So I was receptionist, I did accounting, I did every like little department until I started to support an executive and we just kind of hit it off really well. And it just became what I did. Um, And so I realized that that's kind of what I want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I, uh, I am a career executive assistant. Uh, my favorite part about it is being able to anticipate the needs of my executive and just being able to do things before they need it or ask for it. That's great. So when did you realize that it was a career? I th- I realized it was a career when I joined Leader Assistant, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. if I'm being completely honest. Um, 
I actually have a little bit of a of a gripe with Hollywood that they don't have any movies where the assistant actually wants to be an assistant. Mm. <laughs> Because it is a career choice and it's amazing and you can really grow and change and be challenged as your executive grows and changes. And so I really feel like that meets all of what I want for myself and my career. And it's just a perfect fit. Hmm. Yeah, that's well put. Um, We should definitely make a uh, Netflix movie about an (laughs) assistant who actually likes the role. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, so, okay. So speaking of leader assistant, so when you say that you mean, uh, the leader assistant membership community, which you, um, actually were member number one. So we launched in (laughs) April of 2020, um, Al Hussein, Matt Haney and myself decided to go for it and really do some in-depth coaching training sessions, Um, So we do one call every month, and then we record that, put it in the members' library so people that can't join live can uh, catch up and watch the replays. But I think the thing that's been most interesting now that we're um, a year into this community is just seeing how much we learn from each other. Um, So, like, you know, I've learned from you. I've learned from other members, um, you know, Hopefully you learn from us, <laughs> but it's kind of this uh, give and take, this back and forth uh, relationship and community where we're all supporting each other and encouraging each other. And so first, before I get into a little more specifics on your recent um, job transition, first I wanted to hear, you know, you were member number one and you told me before that you just kind of, as soon as you heard about it, you signed up. So what why would you do that? Why would you invest um, in this type of community? And why are you so quick to jump on board? The second that I realized that I wanted to be an executive assistant, I wanted nothing more than to like gobble up all the education that's out there that would make me even better in my position. So it kind of started off as I read your blogs and then I realized that there was the the weekly happy hours. And then the second that the membership was announced, I was like, oh my gosh, that's even more time, more one-on-ones, smaller group settings. Everyone is there, understands what I'm going through, can relate, can share, can add, can learn from. Um, and so I immediately was like, absolutely like, there's no second guessing. It's just worth my time and my investment. Hmm. That's great. And you had told me before, I think that you had had some um, negative experiences with other assistant communities. I have. Um, sure EAO. About that? EAO. Uh, yeah. Same as you. Um, I That was the first EA community that I was exposed to when I realized that I wanted to be a career executive assistant. And at the time, I was in a position that was underutilizing me. And so part of why I wanted to go to this conference was to kind of gather from other executive assistants to find out how could I be doing more, doing better. And every time that I asked a question or talked to anybody, um, they made me feel horrible. (laughs) Like there was something wrong with me and there was no way to fix it because it's me. Um, and that was not even anywhere near close what I've gotten from the leader assistant community. Like everyone is more than supportive. Um, everyone is willing to jump in and give advice and offer advice. And, um, just, you get so much more like value from it. Yeah, I, uh, it's, it's good to hear you say that because, you know, one of the things when we started this was, and even when I started my blog was just like, listen, there's too many assistants that, and this was my story as well, that are going, um, through the motions alone. And maybe they're the only assistant in their organization, or maybe they're one of several assistants, but they're the only one that really wants to kind of level up and Mm -hmm. become a leader and everybody else is just okay with, you know, just the status quo. Um, So, yeah, it's just really encouraging to hear 
that it's been beneficial for you in that way and that you've found um, your people. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, okay. So part of being in the community is, um, you know, we've done these group coaching sessions and then you have direct access to uh, direct messaging myself and Al Hussein, and you've been kind of in this process where you were underutilized in your role and you wanted to do more, you wanted to take on more, but it just was, you're having a really hard time, um, you know, helping your executive see that you could do more. So tell us a little bit about your challenge with that. And then we'll kind of talk about where you went from there. So my previous executive had never had an assistant before. So a lot of it was more of like teaching moments in it. So when I started, I didn't know I like wanted to be an executive assistant. Um, I just knew how to be one. I just didn't know what it was called. And so I kind of started with him. And there was a lot that I would try to implement. And it just was not what he needed. uh, But he couldn't tell me what he needed. And and that was our biggest struggle uh, was the fact that he was very autonomous. And his value that he felt for his uh, executive assistant was more of a security blanket, if I need you type role. Um, and I need more of a challenge than that. Um, it, to me, I want to be busy. I want to be integrated into the life of my executive. I want to know what meetings they're attending, what action items are needed from that. Um, who are the big players on the team that they're dealing with? You know, what's the background story with that? And, and that was just not something that that executive needed from me. Uh, when COVID hit, we went from being in office to being remote and I really was even more desperate for just adding value to the company uh, because it'd been about two years or so by that time. And I still, my workload was too light for, for what I want uh, for my career and my growth and, and everything like that. And So after taking a few leader assistant membership courses and then purchasing some of the negotiation tactics, interview tactics, resume tactics that Al Hussein offers um, that I got during webinar discounts, (laughs) (laughs) Um, I really just I did block by block uh, of just building up to make sure that my tool belt was sharpened and that I was ready to offer the next executive everything. So I started with my resume and then, um, interviewing and then negotiating. That's great. So one thing that was interesting when we were talking about, um, and walking through this one-on-one is your company, you know, you were underutilized, but they kept like giving you raises, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got, I got a really large bonus in 2019 and a large, uh, increase in salary. Yeah. So it was like, it wasn't like they didn't appreciate you. It was was very happy with me. They, they loved me. Um, and when, when I ended up giving my notice, they were very shocked, um, (laughs) that, that I was leaving, uh, they were shocked, but then they said, I understand cause you have been asking for more work and I just don't have anything for you. Yeah. So, okay. So then you went out and you're like, you know what, this isn't gonna, this just isn't the right fit. I'm going to go find a role where they really want to, they really want a leader assistant. So how did you find the role? And then, um, yeah, how did that, uh, process go to get to land that role? I found it through leader assistance uh, on Facebook. Someone posted that they had been approached for the position, but they weren't interested in it. And if anybody wanted to reach out, and so I did. And looking at the job description, it seemed enticing. Uh, It was for a president. It was at a hotel company, hospitality. So that was an industry that I was relatively familiar with. Um, So that in its own way kind of led me to try and reach out and get the role. And then, um, I had 
one Zoom interview and then one in-person interview uh, before they offered me the position. Awesome. And then when they offered you the the role, you pushed back and uh, negotiated, right? I did. Yeah. So they kind of um, messed up in a little bit in, in the interview process by not asking me my salary. Um, so during all the interviews that we had, we didn't discuss salary expectations at all. I did not want to bring it up. I wanted them to be the first ones to bring it up and they ended up not. Um, so the offer that they gave me, although it was a generous offer was way below what I was looking for. Um, and so I started the negotiations with the HR director cause she's the one that called to offer me the position. Uh, and it was under what I wanted, um, or what I was going for. And so I, I countered back and she ended up taking it to the executive who called me directly and said, let's cut out the middleman. Let's talk. Um, he said that he doesn't think that I was asking for too much and then explained on their end why they offered me the amount they did and that he was really looking to see if we could come to an agreement if I was open to it as well. And it was during that conversation that I knew that like he was the type of executive that I would want to work for because he valued the amount that I was coming in at saying, hey, you know, I see you. I see that you're worth this amount of money. I can't quite get there, but I still want you. Um, and, and just, it was, it was great. Our negotiation, um, kind of lasted the entire day because he had to jump off for a phone call and then I had a meeting. Uh, so we, we did it in splurts <laughs> of negotiation. So, um, I countered with the HR director. So then he came back and said, now let's discuss, you know, let's discuss the benefit package that you're leaving from your current job and see if there's anything of that. Let's start there and maybe we can offer you some here. Um, so we negotiated the benefits package a little bit more and he, then he offered a different, like a higher salary. And I said, you know, that's wonderful. I appreciate it. I would really be okay coming down to this amount, which was higher than, than what he said. Mm -hmm. Um, and he told me that he had to jump off and, and he'd get back to me. And I requested that at that time to be in writing. Um, and what he came back with in writing was actually higher than what I had finally countered with. Awesome. So you stood up for what you believed you were worth and you had professional um, respectful conversations with the executive and HR manager about the, the uh, range and the negotiations. And then um, you told me, I think, I don't know if it was later or throughout that process that this happened, but you mentioned that they essentially respected you more and yeah. wanted you more because you were standing up for yourself and your um, exhibiting uh, solid negotiation skills. Yeah. So the first email that he sent me with that last final number, which is what ended up being my salary, it was not an official offer letter. And so my response back to that email was, this sounds great, but I'd love to see it in, in an offer letter. Um, and before they sent the offer letter, the HR director called me because she needed my address to fill out on the form. And she said that she had spoken to my executive and he had actually been completely impressed at how I negotiated and had said to her that if I can negotiate something like that for myself, then he wants some like that to be me negotiating on his behalf. Um, and it made him want me even more and just solidified their decision in selecting me who was way out of their price range. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about that a lot in our uh, leader assistant calls and um, on our forum and such. But basically the idea that, listen, if your executive wants someone who will go to bat for them and negotiate with vendors, um, negotiate with contractors and 
you know, negotiate with uh, software companies t- when they're trying to upgrade their um, subscriptions and, and add users. Like you're the you're the type of person they want because they don't want to have to do all that negotiation themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so and they don't want somebody that's just going to, you know, let let companies and let vendors, um, you know, walk all over over you. And so, yeah, it's well done. Well done. And thank you for sharing, um, yeah. that, that process. And, and now that I've, uh, worked with him for, for the last month, uh, negotiating is something that he enjoys doing a lot. So it was kind of an element of this is how our dynamic would be as mm-hmm. well. Um, pre first day. Hmm. Awesome. So, that's great. So let's talk a little bit about just a couple of tips. What what are a couple of tips that you would share uh, with new assistants or or any assistant listening? Maybe your top two uh, productivity hacks or assistant tricks up your sleeve. What what have you found over the years that um, that you kind of share with with those when you're at happy hour and, and everybody's going around sharing their, uh, top tips. Um, I save all preferences. I think that's helped me out so many times, uh, with whether my executive ordered lunch from this sushi restaurant one time, I saved that order. So the next time that he's like, I'm in the mood for sushi, I'm like, Oh, would you like me to order this, this, and this, um, And same for if there's guests or their spouse, um, that's been huge. And then just as open communication as you can. Um, so transparency between your executive and yourself in what meetings, what their challenges are, what do they think about things, especially in the beginning, because if you understand how their their mind works and how they they view priority levels, it's going to make your life so much easier. Love it. I'm always uh, saving launch orders because I'm I find that uh, it's super, super draining and, and causes decision fatigue on my executive. If I have to say, mm-hmm. Hey, what do you want for lunch? Or if we pick a place and it's like, what do you want from that place? It's always nice to be, just be able to say, Oh, Hey, I grabbed you this from this place. And he's like, all right, that sounds good. Cause they, most of our executives don't really care about picking something for lunch. They just want, they just want something that's going to, you know, fill them up and, and get them, get them going. <laughs> Yeah. And, and it's also like, I've been in meetings before with their direct reports and they've called me in for a last minute, like, Hey, this meeting's running longer. We do need food and we want to order from Chipotle. And so I've already got their direct reports usuals Mm -hmm. that they like to order from the restaurant and just being able to be like, Oh, so-and-so would you like your usual? My executive looks at me like, wow, how did you know that? (laughs) Awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit as we wrap up. Let's just talk about coaching, one-on-one coaching. So you've um, really leaned in on some coaching throughout this transition. And then Mm -hmm. just over the last couple of years and being a part of our leader assistant membership, um, why should assistants seek out uh, coaching? I think coaching is on a whole other level than a group uh, because it allows you to go into more detail about your specific situation because as an executive assistant, nothing's the same. So, you know, how my email is done for my executive compared to Sally and how she does her executive's email, it's just not exactly the same. So when you're trying to figure out next steps, like leaving a role, um, I know that I was struggling with, is the role not a fit for me or am I doing something that I could change and make it better? Um, And I found that working like one-on-one allowed me to explore that and kind of grow into my own specific situation. Great. And then what, 
would you say to someone who really is like, yes, I, I, I see the value, but I just don't know if I can invest that kind of money or I just, it, they, they, they get ready to book it and they're like, ah, I don't want to spend this money on, on an hour coaching call. Well, what I would probably say to that is kind of looking at my example of my career change. I mean, I'm making more money during the pandemic and I would have not been able to do that if I hadn't gotten the support from the leader assistant membership and from the one-on-one coaching. Um, and that I've pretty much return of investment from that money with this new role and the amount of uh, tools that I've added to my belt just makes me more effective in my position, which will make it easier to then get more money later down the line. And have you had your executives or your company pay for some of your online courses or professional development events? Um, my last company paid for me to attend conferences. Um, when we went to work from home, uh, I didn't feel comfortable asking for them to invest in my education. So I did all of it out of pocket. Um, and I, I don't regret any of it. Yeah. I think as I'm with my new company longer, um, I'll feel more comfortable creating like a business portfolio for, um, pitching that they take over. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, like my career is worth my money and my investment and my time. And so therefore I'm not in any hurry to have my company take it over. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you know, a lot of people talk about, oh, you should invest in the stock market, you should invest in, you know, crypto, you should invest in real estate, you should save, you should, and, you know, all, all that's, that's great, you should definitely diversify your uh, investments. But one of those ways is investing in yourself. And what better way mm-hmm. to invest in your future than to invest in yourself. So well done, well done. All right, well, let, let me finish with uh, one question that is um, a very, very serious question. Which coaching sessions did you enjoy more? The ones with me or the ones with Al Hussein? <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to make sure Al Hussein skips uh, ahead although, of this part of the interview. Although I will interview. say that he did save me from accepting a position that was probably not a fit for me. There you go. There you go. So he did talk me out of that, but yeah. <laughs> I've definitely um, mesh one-on-one coaching with you and your style. Awesome. Well, and I, I love Al Hussein, and he's a great coach. He's a very, very uh, professional um, EA guru, um, trainer, coach. Um, so, But I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I'm not just saying that because you're asking. <laughs> right, right. Anytime I can get a win over him, you know, I like to I like to gloat for a minute. Well, well you you are how I I joined. Um, I still can't put pinpoint what webinar I saw you in, but you were talking about the ideal week, mm, and that's yeah. how I was like, oh, I like what he's saying, and that's how I found your blog. Was I you were like some guest speaker on a panel talking about ideal week? Nice, nice. Let's let's talk real quick about that then. What is the ideal week and how was it helpful to you? So the ideal week is basically working with your executive to find out when do they have family time, when do they like to take their meetings, when do they kind of have the afternoon lull or the morning lull, um, and just kind of creating more of a life work balance for an executive because most of them don't have it. Um And I found that it's helpful for me, especially when I start working with an executive because I don't know him as well, Um, finding out, well, do you like taking meetings in the morning? If you do, like, what's the earliest time that you want a meeting? Uh, And just being able to calendar as if it's them. Great. Yeah. And uh, I'm a big proponent of it, um, obviously, with... That's how you heard about it. I was talking about it. Um, but there's a ideal week template that I use as well that I'll post mm-hmm. the link to in the show notes so people can check that out if they're interested. 
Uh, all right. Well, Alyssa, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thanks for being a valuable uh, leader assistant, premium member for coming up on a year now and for being a uh, member number one. Um, <laughs> That's so exciting. It's very, yeah. I need to get you like a special like badge and t-shirt or something. Yes. Um, but where can people find you if they want to connect and say hi? LinkedIn. Um, I am always willing to accept new networking conversations. And obviously on the circle group, you can reach out to me directly. Um, my LinkedIn is just my first and last name at the end. Um, so Alyssa Berg. Great. Well, I'll share that link in the show notes as well. And for those of you who are interested in our community, uh, check out leaderassistant.com slash community and you can join the free circle community. And then you can become a premium member to get access to our group coaching sessions and the bonus video trainings, um, leaderassistant.com slash membership. Alyssa, thank you so much. Have a good one and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Please review on Apple Podcasts. GoBullows.com.